Okay, so now we've taken our data and we have created two equations to match. And we, we have this graph right here. The, the problem with this is that this is really the portion of the first graph that we want. And then we want this to be the next part right there. But we have this extra. The first equation gives us this extra and it will continue there. And the second equation has this part right here that we don't want. So we want to be able to get rid of that. And to do that, we are going to use what's called a Boolean operator. Um, Boolean expressions will allow us to graph only a part of the equation that we want. A Boolean expression gives a value of true or false. The calculator uses this to return a value of 0 or 1. So false, your statement is false, the calculator returns 0. And if the statement is true, the calculator returns 1. So for example, um, 0 is greater than 1 is false. So if I type that in my calculator and to find your Boolean operators, you go to the test button, second math test, and we want to say that greater than, so I'm going to hit 3 for greater than, 0 is greater than 1. If I hit enter, that returns 0. Um, we can use this idea in this process to graph an equation for specified intervals of x values only, whichever we want. So for example, my first equation um, is negative 10x squared minus 30x plus 30, or 300. I want to graph that only from 0 to 4. Now, we're going to divide by a Boolean expression. However, you can't use this when you divide. The calculator does not like that. So what I am going to divide by is I'm going to split this into two parts. So x is greater than or equal to 0 is going to be the first thing I divide by, and I'm going to divide the second part by x is less than or equal to 4. And I'm going to put parentheses around that whole thing so that I divide by both of those. And don't divide by one, then multiply by the other. So when I go to my y equals, if I go to the back and I hit divide, and this will group, this first parenthesis will group both of these Boolean expressions. And now I'm going to take my x, and I want to hit the test. I want greater than, which is 4. So I want x greater than 0. And I also want to divide by x less than, so I go back to test, which is second math. So I want less than or equal to um, 4. And I can close this up. And now, when I look at my graph, it is only graphing that portion from 0 to 4. And if I look in my table, if I start at 0 and go up by 1 and I look in my table, anything before 0 will get me an error message. And anything after five, after 4 will get me an error message because I will be dividing by 0. And so my graph looks a little bit nicer. Now the next part is just to get rid of the second. So here's all my parts right here. If I only had that turned on, it would just be this part of the graph. I get the error and the error, and that looks much nicer. So now we can do the same thing to graph y2. So I will go into my y2. This one's a little trickier because it's a long equation, but you want to go to the back. right? And eventually, I get there, and I will um, divide by x. In this case, this is an x greater than or equal to 4 and x less than or equal to 8. And I make sure I put parentheses around that entire thing to group that together. And that will give me my graph only for the two intervals that I require. OK, um, we could practice another one. So I'm going to erase these, uh, clear this equation, clear this equation. Um, and then I can type in one of these. Let's type in this first one. 4x cubed plus 2x minus 7. So I can do 4x cubed plus 2x minus 7. If I want to graph that from 3 to 9, I hit my divide. I group my entire bottom. And then I will put x is greater than 3. x is greater than or equal to um, 3. And then I also will have x is less than or equal to 9. Um, 
and then I can look at my graph. And this is only graphing a portion. You can see I still have my plots on. If I turn my plots off, then my points will disappear. And here's this equation. And when I look in my table, things before 3 do not enter. And if I go in my table lower, things after 9 also will give me an error message. So that's how you can use this. Um, one last comment is when you have your equations, you can store them in a file so you can recall them later. So those big equations that I had, actually I'm going to recall them right now because I erased them, now they're gone. However, I can get them back because earlier I stored them. If you hit second program, which is draw, and go over to the STO, I stored them. So I'm going to recall that I stored them in spot one, and it shows my equations right there. Now I had stored them earlier in one and three, and you can see that's how they showed up. Um, so what I can do is, how you do this is if I accidentally erase them, then you can recall them. So the idea is, if I quit this, or let's clear this out, I want to store these equations. You hit second, draw, go over to STO, and then we want to store. If you store it as a picture, it will just save your screen. So it would save your data plots and it would save what your equation looked like, but it wouldn't save the actual equation. Storing GDB allows you to actually recall the equations you have in there. And you can store it to any location you want. I chose one. I could store this to two. I could store it anywhere. So you will have more than one set of equations, perhaps, and then you can store them where you want. Now, if I do go to my y equals and I clear out my equations, right? I clear them. Say I want to try a different equation, see if that fits better. And I try another equation. It doesn't work very well. I can go back and recall the one that I liked better. So I can hit second draw. I can go over to store. And I can recall that set of equations. And it will recall anything that's in your y equals equations. And I stored that in 2. I'll recall it from 2. I hit enter, and there are my equations back. It will not recall your scatter plot, um, so your your lists it won't it won't save. Neither will it save your stat plots, but it will save your equations. So if you want to play around and try different equations for different intervals, then you can come back to one that you liked better later on. Um, that's it for this instruction.